Hello, and welcome to the John G. Orwell's podcast, without which life would be incomplete and have little or no meaning. I, of course, am your host, the uh, captain of this ship. Who else but Tommy else? And while many people tell me that I do not suffer fools, I beg to differ, as I am joined, as always, by the man on the beat from johngsbeat.com, Mr. Jonathan Dominic Robleski. Dominic, good one. You're going for the uh, the Italian side, maybe, but uh, good, but still wrong. No, I did. I took into account uh, your Italian heritage, and I thought that's, you know. That's there are a lot of Dominics in the, uh, in the family, but not me. Man, man. So how you doing, buddy? How you doing on I'm this? I'm okay for once. Uh, fine summer day here. Things have settled down a little bit, so I'm I'm a little bit more relaxed right now. How about you? I'm good. Uh, I went and saw our friend, a uh, friend from the show, Mr. Dave Ergona, earlier. Got my uh, got my fade all uh, tightened up there. I was gonna say I was a little worried about you. Yeah, I saw you yesterday. I mean, for you, you had whoop, your hair was long. Yeah, I can't stand it. It drives me nuts. I mean, I I went, I don't know, 25 years or something like that. I forget what the number was, but uh, where I just cut my own hair. And so the sides in the back, especially the top, I could, you know, live with for, you know, a pretty decent amount of time. But I'm used to having them down, you know, at a zero guard all the time. And now that I go and see somebody, I can't go screwing with it myself. or I'm going to screw up what he's got going on. So... I have to just wait it out. And man, that last week, I go every three weeks and that third week always sucks. If I could afford to go every two weeks, I would just do it. But it's, I got to go every three, but man, that third one, it just really starts getting crazy. And my hair starts looking like Sonic the Hedgehog. I mean, it's just all spiked out in every corner. And But see, you have a head that could take short hair. Like my, if, if I did the, the shave like yours, I mean, nobody, this head needs hair to cover it. I, I agree. Yes, there should be as much color Go going on I, I know it's coming. as possible. There's no doubt there. Uh, I also today uh, finished for the sixth time in my life. I have completed Babylon 5 in its entirety. That's great. 110 episodes of one of the finest sci-fi television shows that, in history. That's quite an achievement. A shining beacon in space, all alone in the night. Well, that ranks right up there with, um, um, yeah, it's got to rank up there with something. <laughs> <laughs> the only other show I think I've watched as much uh, would be Breaking Bad, which I've done f- five I I I feel like I can say six, but I don't know that for sure. I could definitely say five times through. I've watched that. And whole people series. think you're wasting time. <laughs> <laughs> what about Golden that, Girls? Haven't you seen that, or is that just you just period watching? You know, at this point, I mean, like I have sat and gone chronologically episode for episode for the Golden Girls, but probably only like twice maybe three times but then i've just seen the show in general a million times you know babylon 5 is a is you know and and breaking bad are shows that you kind of have to watch you know episodically in order you know you can't just pick up ironically I've, i've yet to see either of them nor do i have plans for it well i think breaking bad it'd probably be a little more up your alley um but but Babylon 5 is just, it's a highly underrated show. Highly underrated. And and I understand why people are, are turned off to it. It's not a very visually appealing show. A majority of the acting is really horrendous. Then what's um, the draw? Outside, okay, there's no outside, visual appeal. The acting is horrendous. Outside, what's the draw? outside of the main characters, like they are good actors. But any any ancillary character and i'm not just talking like you know background people i mean you know people that have a function in the story even they just it's it's astounding it's like where did they find these people i mean they i mean so what's the appeal it's all in the story 
the story is so good that it it's just and 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 the and the actors who are good help drive that story so it's 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 really amazing you know honestly i think it speaks a lot to the writing because it's five seasons long it's such a great story that even with just the shittiest actors they could still <laughs> pull off what was a good show imagine if they had some decent actors on the show you know no did it have an ending or was it no oh, no it's a it's it i mean it is a very final uh ending to the whole thing and it's one of those things where it's like they are the show is one of the things i loved about it was is that they they connect so many things and there's stuff in the first season that doesn't have significance until you get to the last season they have scenes from the final episode in the first season of the show where they kind of like you know in in their own way are showing you how it's going to end but you don't know if that's really how it's going to end or not or whatever but then you get there and you're like ah oh, they've been screaming this in your face like the whole time you know just all these different you know twists and turns and everything so i mean the writing's great it's written by um uh and it was written and created by a guy named j michael straczynski who uh who's also written for other shows and he's written uh comic books and stuff but uh he was a writer on the original he-man and the masters of the universe back in the 80s and uh so was larry Dottillo, who's also a writer on babylon 5 and it was funny because i didn't really know that at first but there was a period of time where i was watching one of my friends uh hadn't seen he-man as a kid because his mom thought it was too violent and they were releasing i know it was ridiculous if you really watch a he-man episode he never punches anybody he throws people he ducks and like they jump into a wall or off a cliff or something well, look, like that. i mean i grew up on roadrunner and wiley coyote were animals oh they did way worse things they did way worse things than anything you'd ever see on he-man he never shot anybody he never hit anybody with that sword you know i mean so but anyway it was funny because that was one of my favorite uh cartoons of all time and it was a show that as popular as it was in its day was not in syndication anywhere for like 20 years like you could it was like of all the cartoons that you saw rerun that was not one of them and even now it's not on any tv stations or anything like that so early in like mid or like early 2000s they started releasing it on dvd so i was just like because i hadn't seen it almost in 20 years at that point so I was just losing it. So I got um, a buddy, you know, my buddy, Ian, who's been on the show too. That's who. Um, Dave uh, Ross. Yeah. He, uh, he and I got together like, you know, at least once a week and did probably about three hours of He-Man, probably go about six episodes or so. And uh, I you're rolling really your like eyes at you rolling your eyes at me you know that's it's it's classic television it's a great it's a great show it holds up it holds up so anyway back then I had been watching b5 and then I just started noticing in the credits of both of the shows a lot of the same names and I just thought that was funny that you know this show that I ended up getting into so many years later were the same people who had done the one that I was obsessed with as a kid so maybe that's the connection maybe that writing by the, that or that connection of those people is what lured you in he's good you guys good j michael straczynski look him up he's why don't we try to get him on the show he's got a lot yeah well he's 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 just good enough that i don't know if we can get him on here. i got susie quattro she's got a million followers on instagram i got her for global traveler you can get this guy on our show now yeah. hop to it I'll tell you, it would be good to have him on. I would also very much like to have one of the, there's the sad thing is, is that a lot of the people, like I'd say 70% of the cast, the main cast of Babylon five have all passed on and, and like before their time, I mean, like none of them were old by any stretch and all right. there's if, not if many I left, but this. there's, but there's one, there's one of the actors left and he happens to play my favorite character on the show and he is still out there so peter jurassic his name is peter jurassic 
So I wouldn't mind getting him on the show. If I could get either that Straczynski guy or Jurassic, what do I get for this? What do you want? It's got to be some sort of recognition. I'll give you a trophy. Oh, a trophy would be nice. I'll give you a trophy. You get me either one of those guys, I'll give you a trophy. Booker, Booker of the like, Year. What's that? Booker of the Year. All right. This is like not some crappy thing that you're just going to scribble over and, you know. I mean, no, I, I when when you won your spot in the Chia Pet tournament, I gave you true. I gave you a solid trophy. I will give you at the very least something in that in that vein. Yes, I I, I, I will work on. I that. give my word here on the show to all of our listeners. Because we don't like bringing the big names. Well, we will see. We will see. You got to give um, me the names, though. You got to text them to me or something. Yeah, right? yeah. I you wouldn't even know how to spell these. these are, Zinsky? Well, the R Z Y N S K I. Probably, yeah. Jurassic is like park. No, it's with a K. So, I think that's really the only difference. Instead of the J. Anyway, so uh, so John and I went on a field trip yesterday. We, we did. Had, we had from Highland Park, Illinois, up to up to Highland Park, Illinois, home of Madam Zuzu's Tea House, uh, which is owned and operated by both Billy Corgan and his wife, Chloe. And um, before we get into our trip uh, that we took up there yesterday and why, uh, we should give a little background on our history with Madam Zuzu's Tea House. And so, Billy Corgan. And Billy Corgan. Um, back when I was working in wrestling with Resistance Pro, and John was a regular behind the scenes helping out uh, and uh, a steady presence there in the company. Uh, Billy had almost simultaneously uh, opened up a tea house called Ma'am Zuzu's, and it was a very small, sort of intimate quiet place it was uh, dark it, it's what it it's what it sounds like it did they sell tea but they also had vegan desserts and and little small dishes and things like that um yeah very uh it was sort of a moody environment you know like kind of a maroon red wallpaper um a lot of like ornate things around uh but they sell little tchotchkes and uh they've got you know vinyl uh random vinyl of different bands and stuff and then of course there's smashing pumpkins uh exclusives that you can only find at madame zuzu's um and so back in the day on um either fridays or saturday nights billy would dj sometimes up there at the at the house and uh he was DJing under the name DJ Ivory Tower. And uh, a bunch of us who, you know, are from, you know, our pro consisted of people from all over the country, but the the local folks would get together and hang out there when he would DJ. And they had board games, play Scrabble and Monopoly and stuff like that. And we drink tea and eat vegan food. And we had a really great time. And then place would shut down around 10 or something like that and uh billy would just lock up the doors and then we'd all he'd let us all hang out and then he would just sit there with us and we'd all talk and just shoot the shit for a while sometimes he would get on the piano and play something um it was a very cool time in in my life i mean because it's for me for me it's an hour drive to get out there and then an hour back but it was always worth going um and his and you uh, perform there i got the privilege to actually perform there and uh much to my both delight and absolute terror billy did uh attend <laughs> the performance <laughs> uh, you were good. I i'll was, give you your credit you were good i was not uh I, I knew it might be a possibility, but I really thought it was on the low end of, of, of happening. So I really wasn't too concerned about it. And, and then I thought, you know, I'd be fine either way. But then when I saw, you know, he's a, he's a, 
intimidating presence. He's, you know, six well, five or like something like idol. that. Yeah, and he's he's the reason that I play at all is <laughs> walking in the back door and I'm just like, oh my God. And I was playing one of his songs in my set too. Now I went out of my way to pick one that was it, it was it's legitimately one of my favorite Smashing Pumpkin songs, but it's a B side. So it's not like it's some radio hit or something like that. So unless you really know the Pumpkins catalog, you wouldn't have known it was a Pumpkin song. But it doesn't but, matter what we do. The fact is you were playing one of his songs, regardless of whether it was a hit or not. So that's where the, the pressure would come in. Oh, sure. Yeah, no, I was, I mean, our friend Jenny was there and literally like was coming up in between songs and dabbing me with a towel because I was just sweating bullets. I mean, I was, <laughs> I recall, and it wasn't that hot in there. I mean, I just like, I was that nervous, but anyway, I had a lot of great memories of, of Madame Zuzu's and, um, really good times. And, um, do we know the origin of the Madame Zuzu name? I do not. I okay. do not. I, I was trying to look it up today cause I am writing about that for global traveler magazine. Um, and uh, I, I did not see anything on the origin. Yeah, I do not know that. But maybe if you tweeted at them and asked, maybe someone would uh, would get you. Already in process, my friend. Yeah, all right. Um, so anyway, uh, since then, uh, those nights kind of came and went, and they actually uh, decided to move their location. Uh, which where the original one was, was not in a great place for walking traffic. So it was very much a destination. Like you got to be specifically going to Madame Zuzu's for something. Now, all that aside, they also do things like, you know, they have poetry readings and, you know, people play music and they have special presentations and classes and, and things like that there. Um, I actually got to do a, uh, a creativity class that Billy himself had led there. Uh, he did it, uh, for two weekends. And so they do other things like that there too. So that draws people in, but, um, well, they, my wonderful friend, Jen Weigel, daughter of the late great broadcaster, Tim Weigel, right. has her social spiritual social club there every, usually every month. There you go. So yeah, it's things like that. So. They had since moved to a new location. I had not been there. Um, and uh, when I went to the NWA uh, wrestling show uh, two months ago or whenever it was, they had had a cardboard cutout of Billy Corgan standing there with an Italian sub. And I had heard him actually talk about it on his podcast. And it was kind of bred out of the fact that he hadn't had an Italian sub in forever. And so I think he had the... The, the vegan chef they've got there work one up for them. And so now they've got on the menu, Billy's Italian sub. Now, somewhere along the way, I also heard about them having a meatball sandwich now. Grandma Jojo's secret yeah. family recipe meatball sandwich. Vegan, yeah, vegan meatball. Um, and I was uh, very intrigued by it. I love a good meatball sandwich. And... Um, I, I don't get into too many vegan foods. I will say that back in the day when we would go to Zuzu's, the the fudge brownie, the, the vegan brownie was better than any regular brownie yep. I had ever had. I mean, it was just phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I like, it was my one indulgence. I'd sit and drink tea all night, but man, I had my brownie at some point. I mean, it was just great. So, which they still had there. Uh, when we went there yesterday. So I'm glad to see it there. Um, but so we got to the place and it's gotta be five times the size of the old place, much brighter. It's got a lot of great lighting because there's windows pretty much on almost all sides of it. Um, and right in the heart of Highland park down. Yeah, right, I mean, right, trip. right next to the train. And then yeah. where we saw the NWA, I didn't realize until we were leaving it's on literally on the same street probably maybe a block away north like you, it's called studio one so i don't know what direction it was well like we, we drove, uh, our cars were facing north okay other way south same okay. same side of the street other way half a block maybe a block more so, so I, it was, 
I had no idea, but it was literally right across the street, okay. basically, from there. So that's great for him. He can run his wrestling show right yeah. across the street, and he's got Zuzu's right there. That's awesome. Um, but the presentation of the place, you know, look, it looks really, you know, it looks cool on the outside and everything. Uh, staff, very nice and, and uh, courteous. And uh, they, uh, you know, a lot, they have a lot of the same type of stuff and do all the same type of things that the old place did. But they've got a stage now, you know, for because, you know, it makes sense with all of these types of things that they're doing and the different, you know, talks that are given and, and readings and music and things like that. And, um, and, you know, as far as merchandise and stuff, same type of stuff. Um, I did, uh, I did purchase a, uh, vinyl 12 inch here of, uh, smashing pumpkins album, a door, which it's, album it's called a door. A A D O R E, not like a door you walk through or walk That's into adorable. if you're John. But um, but yeah, was able to pick that up. Very cool. But like I said, we went there to eat. So uh I got there. I ordered the meatball uh sandwich and uh it came with a, a small side salad. John, what did you get? I had the tuna melt. I took a, a detour only because, as you know, well, I don't eat beef. Obviously, this is not beef, but I was, uh, I don't eat beef because I don't like the taste. So I was a little worried that the meatball sandwich would taste too much like meat. So I opted for the tuna melt, which had, uh, you know, tofu smoked provolone, which was really good. And it had some, there was a little bit of sauce of some sort. It had to be a, a kick of something, just enough heat it wasn't a lot and then uh, a side of uh, really really good potatoes oh really yeah, yeah. well you had, you opted for the salad i had the potatoes yeah i just felt like i was probably getting enough carbs from the uh sandwich so i didn't want to double up on it you know but um but you 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 enjoyed it very much. You did you, did you you took half of it home. Have you eaten it yet, or is it still? I don't know. I ate it that evening, like about oh. twenty minutes after I got home. I was doing some editing, and, and I, I yeah, I, I scarfed it down. Yeah. Well, the uh, the meatball. Um, I was very uh, I I don't want to say pleasantly surprised, but it was still better than I don't know what, what I thought it was going to be, but it was really good um it uh if you hadn't told me that it was vegan i would have no idea if somebody just put that down in front of me and said here here's a meatball sandwich i've been right on and you know now the thing i, that I did i did message them though i'm trying to find out what that um the dipping sauce was because i believe it's the same whatever the, the dipping sauce i had for my potatoes i believe was the same um sauce that might have been on my sandwich it had the same type of heat so I, I I sent a message asking what that was. They also I noticed up near the counter had different sauces that you could put on like soy sauce and and other you know and uh, jardiner and um, you know, sriracha and stuff like that. So you had options there. Uh, they also have free water. So if you just want to drink water, which I did, then That's right. you just get to go get you know water. So that was cool. What I really liked about the meatball sandwich was it was the spiciness. It I that was not something I was expecting. You don't in in I've never had a spicy meatball sandwich. I guess you know. So well, it was, and, and it was, and it was just enough, sort of like the sauce you're talking about. It was just enough that it was, um, you know, it it's like it warmed warmed the body. You know, it warmed you from inside, but not enough to make you sweat either. You know. Now, was it like, was it an Italian sauce or just a heat sauce? Because like mine was not a heat, I mean, mine was not an Italian sauce. Mine was a heat sauce. I, I, honestly don't, your... I honestly don't think that it was in the sauce. I think it was in the actual uh, oh, okay. meat, so to speak. Um, like they must have peppers or something cooked into that or something like that because i didn't feel i didn't feel like it was the sauce i feel like once i was biting into the actual like beef of it that was where it was at oh you're right it was probably in my tuna mixture as well or my tofu tuna mixture as well yeah. i do want to add though mine was on um 
grilled sourdough, which was amazing. It grilled perfectly. Very good. Yeah, it, it was good. It was really good. And it was, you know, you and I hadn't, you know, you, you know, you and I used to go out to lunch almost once a month on a regular basis. So, you know, COVID it was, killed us. yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. I guess that is what really threw us off, but you know, yeah, we hadn't been out to lunch with each other in a while. So it was good. We were out there for almost two hours and it was reasonably priced. Yeah, it was. And, um, you know, and they had some pretty good traffic there and, uh, people come in and checking the place out and, and then uh, as we were leaving, they had uh, a, a good old a good old fashioned uh, photo booth, and um, and so uh, John, I told John, I'm like, we gotta we gotta do it, and he wholeheartedly agreed. And uh, so we go and we look inside. Well, first of all, six bucks, six bucks to do the thing for one photo for one photo. But we're like, all right, well, what the hell? We're here, right? You know, black and white. Yeah. Well, but black and white is part of the charm of it. So I understand, but I'm just like, painting the scene. That's that's all. I you know I understand that. But the uh, so we get inside, swipe the card, and then I start reading the instructions. And this light comes on, and this red light's flashing, and I'm reading it. And as I'm reading, it says, "Pose while the red light is flashing." And then I read it and then I'm like processing in my head. I'm like, well, what does that mean? As I'm watching this red light flashing. And then I'm like, oh shit, we have <laughs> like, we got to get down because the camera's pointed at our, like our, our waists. And like, before we could do it, bang, the light goes off and it takes our picture of our, of our knees of our knees. Yeah. So then we're like, all right, one more time. <laughs> So twelve dollars later, we got the photo, and it's most of it's half of John's head, and me with a screaming face on the other. So you might say I was all right. Uh, man, well, I uh, I did post it up on uh, on Instagram at Tommy underscore else, and I'm sure that uh, you'll see. John got a lot of good photos of the establishment itself. And uh, which you'll find on globaltravelerusa.com next week. That's right. So, uh, yeah, if you're in the Highland Park area, I mean, you don't have to be a, a Billy or a Pumpkins fan or anything like that. I do recommend it. It's a, it's a quaint and cool little place to check out and uh, a lot of neat Billy stuff. Billy was not there. Billy was not there, but I doubt he's just sits around at Susan. I, I assume he's in the kitchen, you know. <laughs> that would be something. That would be something. That's one thing I don't think they've done there. They should have a day where we're like Billy has to, Billy works the grill. Grill grill master Corgan. He's like on a Hey Sunday. Corgan, we got a turkey sub. Chop chop. Yeah. Chibuga, chibuga. <laughs> I can't I can't do a good Billy Corgan, otherwise yeah. I'd respond. But... Oh, I I would never even I would never even try to do a Billy Corgan. Um, so yeah, so but it was fun. It was I'm glad that I, you know because I've been curious for a while to see what the new one looked like and how you know I've seen a lot of pictures of stuff going on there and everything. But um, you know I'm glad. Uh, like I said, um, his wife Chloe is a very big, very instrumental part of running that place. So I. Uh, I'm happy for both of them that it's it's turned into what it has and um it was, it was a good time yeah good, good yeah. food good time uh, for me it's nowhere near the drive it was for you it's for me it's about 20 minutes tops yeah it's an hour to get out there but uh but it was worth it it was totally worth it i had a nice yeah. time and a good afternoon and came home with an awesome vinyl and uh had well, you got to spend time with me yeah i got a good meatball sandwich out of it and you know as i sat with a meatball so uh so anyway <laughs> that's our that was our that was our trip that was our our voyage to madame zuzu's you can Good visit time. you can visit them at madamezuzus.com and check out their their online shop they've got i think 
I think you can get food on there, but you can definitely you get, get food. You get tea. They have wonderful tea selections. That's true. You can definitely order tea and stuff. Yeah. And then they've got merchandise for both the shop, the band. I don't know if they have any NWA stuff, but I did not see any NWA. Stuff. I don't think they do. Yeah. But, um, but yeah. And if you're a pumpkins fan, they do. I, uh, I was looking through some of the stuff that they've got and it's, um, uh, there are live recordings that have never been officially released one they had one from like 89 you know like when the band was like a year or two old at that point uh and then they had one from 98 which was more from the era of the album that i had just bought um do they have our performance there circa 2014 no no, no, we we had the uh, extreme uh, honor and pleasure of being able to be part of uh, uh, Resistance Pro's roster going on stage along with Billy at Ravinia, which is in Highland Park, uh, not far from where Zuzu's is. Uh, no, that recording has yet to be released to the public. Um, it's on YouTube somewhere. It is. If you look up uh, um, Resistance Pro Ravinia, it'll there's a pretty good video of it up there so and remember how cool it was like uh because we had obviously special treatment we got to park literally like within a hundred feet of backstage it, it was one of the best parts of the thing yeah because like it, it for those who don't know the venue ravinia it's a big outdoor venue and Par parking is there's you got to park there like is a, there there is none basically and you, you have you to park, park like a couple miles away and it bust over exactly i mean you, there's just i don't know how that place has functioned for as long as it has just because it's, it's so beautiful it's, it's and that's uh, it's unbelievable sight. it is it's it is it's a really wonderful, wonderful and the place. and the bunch is really i mean it is a pain in the butt you park two like two miles away there's a couple of parking lots but they do run it pretty efficiently yeah yeah but yeah we literally were able to pull up and literally just right up to like the door of the place we were going into i i was it was it just yeah that was we had, we got a lot of special treatment that night but that was for me one of the highlights was yeah. not having to worry about parking so <laughs> um but yeah another awesome memory another awesome memory um in other news uh Mortal Kombat has its next release coming out. Why? Anytime I bring up something that I'm interested in, you go head in your hands. You know, <laughs> I can't talk about things that I'm into here. You know, you can. You I'm just expressing I, I sit and listen to you know, your softball and you know and all you, your other. And I'm just expressing things, my opinion. You know, <sighs> but no, you know me. Mortal Kombat's my game. So for you know the, the new one coming out is a big deal. Now, it doesn't come out until September. They just recently announced it, um, probably in the last month. And right around the time of the announcement, they put out a, a thing that if you wanted to get in on what they call a stress test, uh, they want to do an internet stress test on it, um, you know, you submit your name and your ID number and stuff for your system. And basically, they can see, like, you know, how much do you play, you know, all that sort of stuff. And based on, you know, the certain whatever their criteria is, they would then choose who would be part of the stress test. Now, there's a lot of people who get picked for it and everything because they're literally trying to stress their servers and see, like, you know, how bad is it going to be? They're trying to prevent issues that they've had in the past. Uh, but yesterday I got an email and I got accepted and I got a I got a code and uh was able to download it. Now, typically when you get a demo like this, you know, for a fighting game, it's just, they give you like two characters to try one stage that you play in and that's it, you know? Um, but this, they gave, they give you four characters to play with multiple stages. It's, you can tell it's not like the, it's not a hundred percent done, but what little things that, will get shined up later on i mean even if it just was even if it stayed how it is it's beautiful it's one of the most beautiful looking moral combats i've ever seen and I, I, it's great so i have it for the weekend so i got it for now until sunday uh middle of the day and now, uh, 
Forgive me for a novice question. Sure. Once the game comes out, September? Yeah. Okay. You'll be able to play it. Now, are you able to play it um, online against other people? Like, would you be able to play Scotty the Wonder Boy? Yes. So you have, you could play against someone like that or you could play on your own? Oh, sure. Yeah. So you could play, you could either play on your own, you could play online against someone specific. Like if I, you know, told that kid to get online, which by the way, I have many times and he's always busy. He's got something going on. Go, oh, I want to play, you know, he always says he's going to, he always tells me. I'm calling gonna... you out, Wonder Boy. Yeah. He always tells me he's going to kick my ass and all this. And then, you know, and, and I can never get him on. And the only time I've ever gotten to play him, I'm pretty sure has been when he's been over at my place in person. And I'll tell you what, it didn't end well for the kid. So maybe he's just afraid. But technically, yes, we could. Or you can play random people online, which I do a lot of. Um, it, it's because most of them, I'm, I consider myself to be a pretty good Mortal Kombat player. But the people online are like on a whole nother level. I mean, they're just, cause these are people who are putting in, I, 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 if I'm putting in hundreds of hours, they're putting in thousands of hours. Well, I mean, clearly they, it's value of time. Right. Well, you know, so they, but I'm just, you know, they, but it sharpens the edge because then if I'm used to playing them and then I play my buddies, that's well, no problem then, you know, so. It's like my father always, always used to tell me when I was in karate, it was like, every time you spar, spar with the black belts they'll kick your ass but then when you fight a white belt you'll have no problem and he was right so that's the wisdom i impart upon you along with my enthusiasm for mortal kombat one is actually the name of the, the game mortal kombat one so for those of I you who are it. for one, those of you looking forward to the game i can promise you as a staunch mortal kombat fan you will not be disappointed. And Tommy, we'll take on all challengers. I will. Just uh, if I if you're on an Xbox, look up Eric Saint Vaughn. That's the uh, that's the handle. Just no period after the Saint. They wouldn't let me. They wouldn't let <laughs> me do it. He lives again. Oh yeah. Well, I just you know that's what I started with, and I never never changed it. My father, my father, my brother. <laughs> has gotten kicked off of Xbox a few times for, for some of the uh, handles he's come up with. <laughs> um, he had one, he, it was cover, it was all one word, but it was covered in S-E-A-M-E-N. <laughs> yeah, I wonder and, why he got kicked off. And then he replaced that with dad milk. Um, <laughs> So it just, <laughs> but anyway, who oh boy, <laughs> you can find me at Eric St. Juan. So, well, John, it was great going to Madame Zuzu's with you. I did have a it good was. time. It was, it was a good time. And uh, I would be more than, they had a lot of stuff on the menu that, I mean, it was kind of hard to choose, to be honest. I, mean, I would I, not be adverse to going back and trying other stuff. Right. I mean, cause I, 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 I went in for the meatball. I was almost detracted by some other options that they had that sounded really good, but I wanted to stick to it, you know, make sure I had the meatball and then there'll be plenty of other things, you know, if, I, you know, the end yeah, there, was, there was something else I really wanted to try. I can't remember what it was, but maybe it was a bowl or something. Um, so they like yeah, a chicken you, Caesar be, thing that looked good. I wanted to try that. I mean, I'd be up know. for another round. Yeah. So, but anyway, uh, yeah. Five stars to uh, Madam Zuzu's. Anyone want to join us? Let us know. We'll, we'll do a whole uh, the John G. Or else podcast outing. It could be our first outing. Well, All our may listeners, maybe we can do a live uh, broadcast from Madam Zuzu's. Well, we'd have to. That would take a little, you know, work. But we could actually we could have people there with us with no work. Well, and you like to do as little work as possible, so it works right up your alley. I'm bringing in the big names. I'm bringing in a Straczynski and a Jurassic. Well, well what, that all remains to be seen. That all remains to be seen. But I hope you do. Prove me wrong. I'll get you. I'll get you. I'll get you a real nice trophy. I'll get you a nicer what trophy. What if I get a bowl? Then the the more you get, the bigger the trophy. 
<laughs> All right. And, and do I get a frosty Coke with that too? I'll give you a frosty Mexican Coke. Oh, with right, no. the, with the trophy. I'll give you a, right. a, that's it's completely worth rounding that up to talk to either one of those men. So get I will work it. on it, man. All right. Well, there it is for the John G. Or else podcast. I of course have been who else? But Tommy Ellison with me as always. The man on the beat from johngsbeat.com, Mr. John Robleska. Peace.